welcome back everyone to a new video to the start of a brand new series. First things first, I apologise. I know you can hear how bunged up I am. All right, we're just going to pause that for a second because I did not sound great back then. I filmed this episode for the new series ages ago. It might have been early 2018 to be honest. So I'm going to re-record the beginning explaining the rules of this run because back then I was sick and I sounded terrible. <laughs> So the series is something called Scavenger Run, Invade to Survive, which actually describes it pretty well. The challenge is to beat Dark Souls 3, but each area I go through I have to find a weapon from that area, and perhaps an armour piece and ring as well. Once I have a weapon, I must invade a real online player and defeat them. Successfully defeating a real player gives me one chance to try and beat the area boss. So for instance, when we get to the High Wall of Lothric, there's 11 potential weapons we could choose, and so we pick one, we invade an online player, hopefully beat them, and then we can challenge the area boss. So it's three steps per area. Once we get done with the first two or three episodes, we'll start finalizing the rules and improving things with your feedback, okay? All right, that's all there is to it, really. Now, I'll let the first episode of our brand new adventure begin. Enjoy. Okay, here we go. I finished my... <coughs> Oh, lordy. Oh. We are clearly on a brand new character. Uh, I'll just turn the HUD on here and uh, show you that I've named this character The Hunter. Pretty smart, I know, because on the series we're not only hunting for weapons through the lands, but we're also hunting down other players online. So I thought this would be a fitting name, reminding us what we need to be doing. I'm going to remove all my armor and weapons, of course. Goodbye, farewell, and now we can look at my character who's looking, looking... DISGUSTING! Since there are no weapons in this first area, before the first boss, we'll have to use our bare fists. Uh, we definitely will be picking up the Ashen, Esten Fla uh, the Ashen Estus Flask because, uh, if you guys don't know, if you don't pick up the Ashen Estus Flask here, then Andre the blacksmith actually won't let you upgrade your Estus flasks in the future. So you can't actually skip picking this up. Uh, and also it could come in helpful in the future if we want to do any weapon arts. Ideally the main thing we'd actually want to get done in this area is um, defeating this crystal lizard because then we'd get a titanite scale and upgrade materials obviously will be very important. Because for this series you can upgrade weapons as much as you want but think about it. You can only use that weapon for one area, because then well, as soon as you get to the next area, I have to find another weapon as per the rules. So I'd want to be very sparing with my upgrade resources, because blowing them all on one weapon, let's say if I gave myself a plus 10 weapon or something crazy, I couldn't use that weapon as soon as I get to the next area, so I could be left powerless later on. Keep forgetting about his AoE attack. Oh no! It's a stupid AoE attack! Ah, my sunburn! Oh my goodness. It's me from the future doing a quick informative voiceover and I'm also not sick anymore as you'll be able to hear. What you're watching now is my successful crystal lizard attempt, or ravenous crystal lizard I should say. I honestly didn't think this would be so hard, but this enemy really doesn't have any major weaknesses. It's got high defense and overall the problem was I just never really used bare fists only before. Now I figured out that you could repeatedly strike it to open up a repost opportunity. This only did about 60 to 70 damage though, so still not a walk in the park by any means. <laughs> At the end of the day, some enemies just aren't very exploitable, if that's even a word. And in this case, I just had to keep fighting it over and over again until I figured out its moveset, its patterns, and information like that. The fight, this fight you're watching now, took about 6 minutes, which doesn't seem very long at all, but the weird thing is, all my previous attempts were taking much longer, like it was just this run where it clicked for me. Isn't it weird how it turns out like that sometimes? 
You can fail constantly on one enemy or section for hours, and then all of a sudden you just blast through it like it's a piece of cake. I'm glad we got this done though. I'm sure we'll find a use for the Titanite scale in later episodes, and also I just think it's quite a cool achievement to kick off this series with, so that's why the majority of the fight I, I included it all just sped up so you could see I'd actually done it legit. <laughs> So yeah, great start, and I actually found that harder than the boss I'm about to do, but more about that in a bit. The first boss of the game first boss of the series is Udex Gundir, the Petrified Warrior. Actually, my most popular video ever, I think, is when I fought this guy on release day. It is a cool opponent, there's no doubt about it. He has about a thousand health on new game, if I remember correctly, and of course that means my fists are not very effective. However, I can't lie, I was not honourable with this fight at all. I went for the most efficient, safest kill possible, which took me a few tries, to be fair, uh, I just had to memorise his moveset. But once you've got that down, you can just chain riposte counters for the entire fight, pretty much. Now my reasoning for doing this is, of course this is the first area, so I'm just trying to get this done as quickly as possible so that we can move on to areas with actual weapons and invasions, so that's the reason for this method being used. I still mess it up uh, quite a few times, but this is my successful run. And obviously in this first episode there's no penalties for dying to the boss since there's no PvP allowed in this initial area, so I can't invade anyone. But I think the challenge of defeating the Crystal Lizard and Udex Gundir completely bare is plenty of challenge for this episode as it is. For the second stage of the fight, he transforms due to his dark corruption. Significantly more difficult in this stage, I would say, since his range practically triples and also his hitboxes become a little bit harder to judge, I find. Anyway, my strategy here is I'm standing pretty much directly in front of him at the same distance away each time. And this seems to be a sweet spot where it makes it very likely he'll do his forward hand slam lunge attack, which is pretty easy to parry. And once you do parry him, you can get him kind of locked in a loop. So then you just rinse and repeat the same strategy for the rest of the fight. Something a bit more advanced you can do, I believe, is, well, once you parry him, it's actually possible to hit him with an R2 before taking the riposte, if you're very fast, if you get what I mean. But I didn't do that here. I just, I just kept things nice and easy, played it safe. In addition to that, once he evolves, he's actually weaker to fire, so we're going to pop off some of the firebombs we looted earlier in the level. And with that, we have our first major victory. This area is pretty much locked down with defeated Udex Gundir. All we need to do to prepare for future areas is head deeper into Farling Shrine just to pick up some items, which will be very helpful later on. But aside from that, we're in a great position now to travel on through these new lands, finding strange weapons, invading people with them, and defeating the bosses.